Hello, beautiful people. Hello, everyone. We're making this video on Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas, it's 25th of December today. We've left the concept of religion far, far behind, so we don't celebrate any of this per se, but we're loving how happy everyone is. We're loving yeah. how everyone is just in the spirit of holidays. And you know, we were laughing about, we were laughing and also reminiscing about how humans are so conditioned to get happy on certain days, to get sad on certain days, to like yesterday I went for a massage and I said to the lady, I said, I pass by you every day because I work at the Palace Hotel uh, on my laptop. And she, I said, why are you so happy today? She's like, it's the holidays. Everybody seems so happy. And I'm like, I wish people could just draw from their inner strength of happiness, that inner joy that's always within us, that we don't need any holidays or any special occasion to feel good. We are connected to prime creator and we're truly there's so much joy that emanates from within us we have like a spring of joy that's waiting to burst out from all of us and if only every single one of us could tap into that 365 days a year i know it's easier said than done do you know one thing i've realized is that religion is the only strand that connects 3d to some form of spirit yes. or god and even that is a beautiful thing it's yes. their link it to god hope. it gives them hope it gives yes. them connection even though it's uh, devoid of any true meaning or truth in the universal sense but still it gives them that connection that they need to go on and without that this world would be in chaos so right. it, even organized religion serves a purpose it serves a purpose pushing people to the light in one way or another yeah. okay so before we get into the halls of Amenti, everyone, we have some amazing news for you. We're going to be live streaming parts of the New Earth Music Festival in Croatia like we did last year. We were in Miami just one year ago. The House of Ra was in Miami. That was our, in our first our inaugural event. Can you imagine? Like in the last one year, we've done the shift into, coast, uh, shift into 5D Costa Rica retreat. We've done the House of Ra Miami. In May, we did the House of Ra Tulum. We launched the New Earth Music Festival. We did the 222. We, we did the, the cord Mystery cutting. School. We launched the New Earth uh, yeah, Mis Mystery School. I cannot believe we all did of Merlin. this. Merlin. Merlin, uh, 222, all the Markaba stuff, the astral travel with the, with the Sirius Lions. I cannot believe this is all just one year. It just shows us the momentum of the light. So the good news is that we're going to be streaming a lot of it. The New Year's Eve dance party, tune in, dance, invite your friends. We're, we're going to be, Saman and I are going to be DJing. We have the most epic set yet. It is such a nostalgic, such an activating, such a high frequency. Two hour, 15 minute set. It goes right up to midnight Croatia time. And before that, we're doing a soul retrieval meditation where we'll all of you get to access it for free. We're making this available li like we did last year in Tulum. Not last year, just in May in Tulum. So all the live stream, the Christ, uh, I, I believe there's a whole live stream schedule. Just go to houseofra.com. So it's H-O-U-S-E-O-F-R-A.com. It's also available on our other website, which is Eldora and Siman, which is spelled S-I-M-A-N dot love. Yeah, dot love. Dot love. So do check it out, save your date and save the date, save the time and stream in the angelic ceremony. Please prepare for it being a cleansed state. It's a very, very high frequency ceremony where we bring, we create a sacred container. We bring down the angels, the guides, and we set the space for the whole festival. And all of you attending live will receive all the healing. And that is our intention. So check into that. There's also a, um, an ET party. Yeah, an ET dance, dance party. party on Jan second, where we're all going to be dressed up as our ET selves, our higher our dimensional DJ selves. Adam, he's from the UK and he's an Arcturian walk-in, so it's actually an ET party yes. with an actual extraterrestrial walk-in DJing. We're so 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 excited! So we're going to be streaming a lot of this live. Go check out our live stream calendar at houseofra.com. Save the dates and we and will see And the live there. stream links are right there, and replays will also be available in case you missed the live. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so we're going to get into the halls of Fomenti, sit back, relax. We have, we are just excited to be making this video today. Yeah, definitely. So people always ask, what are the halls of Fomenti? And there are many uh, theories, there are many myths, there are many legends, there are many misconceptions. But um, uh, this is uh, the story that we're presenting is what we have found out through uh, researching multiple, multiple uh, resources and corroborating information from our own personal guidance as well as very well respected 
uh, books and authors such as uh, Shiana Dian's Voyagers 2 um, and um, also my own personal research Eldora and I have been looking up this topic as it really interests us we've been to Egypt we've uh, felt our connection with past lives in Egypt and there's uh, a very deep connection between Egypt, the Giza Pyramid, and the Halls of Amenti. So we'll explain all of that today. So this is a very, very ancient story that starts from 560 million years ago. When um, in Before the, you even get into that, let's yeah. just set the basis. Let's set sure. the foundation. So the Halls of Amenti, to cut it in a super quick nutshell, is a stargate portal, as Siman got into in the last video. It's a stargate portal that lies beneath earth so it's it's in, in the inner core. earth it's yeah. in inner earth it's connected to it literally gives us access so there's a, in inner earth there is this stargate portal that connects us through the giza pyramid to higher dimensions yes okay so just keep that in mind and then the story will give you more yeah. clarity on yeah, this yeah definitely so our universe is composed of five harmonic universes which means that in each level from level one to level five are contained three dimensions our planet earth is in the third dimension and it's in the lowest of the five harmonic universes we're in harmonic universe one um 560 million years ago there was a twin planet of uh, planet earth called terra and uh, that was started as a project by the Lyrans uh, approximately 560 years ago they wanted to create a very powerful race that would be the guardians of the planet Terra. And when we um, hear about the Garden of Eden and all these stories about heaven, that was the planet Terra. It was a beautiful planet. It was a planet that we uh, were masters of. We had all of our 12 strands of DNA activated. We could teleport, we could transport, we could fly. We could do magical abilities with all of our um, DNA strands activated. And it was a very rich and resourceful planet. And um, it uh, started out as a, a planet of 800, 8 billion souls. And many intergalactic species would come and visit. And it was like a planet where everybody wanted to come and experience a, pe a part of that heaven on Earth. And um, everything was perfect. It was designed perfectly. Our DNA was perfect. And there was very little genetic modification so everything was peaceful everything was harmonic and this was like a very beautiful existence everyone uh, just wanted to live in that state forever but um, what happened is over after eight million years because so many interdimensional species were gravitating towards that planet some species started eyeing that planet with uh, the vision of controlling the resources of that planet because uh, they wanted to um, actually uh, actually take the resources of that planet and control them because they're, they're all, there are many negative races in this universe as well as positive. So what these negative races, um, and some of them are like the reptilians, the greys, the zetas, some of these negative races, the way they infiltrate planets is not by direct control and takeover with their weapons because they know that the intergalactic federations or the galactic police would immediately intervene. So what they do is they slowly infiltrate the planet and they mix and mingle with the society until they become a part of that society and they create a genetic breakdown or genetic mutations by interbreeding with the locals of that planet. So after 8 million years of peace on planet Terra, they, uh, the genetic intermingling with negative races like the Orions, Zays and Reptilians started. And the Terranusium race was corrupted. And once they were corrupted, it happens over many generations. It doesn't happen in just one generation. So when, when you interbreed with a negative species, you inherit their negative DNA. And your future generations are now not going to have 12 strands of DNA. They'll have eight. And then the next generation will have seven and so on until they get corrupted and uh, they start displaying these um, same traits as their ancestors of control, of greed, of taking power from others and uh, taking uh, resources and wanting to own things rather than allowing Sharing everything things. to be in peace and harmony. Hmm. So 
this led to wars and there were some warring factions called the Alanians and the Lumians in the planet Terra and they started warring against each other. There was one side that was more um, leaning towards peace, uh, which were the Lumians and the Alanians were the ones who were more greedy and corrupted and power hungry. So the Alanian race started to uh, tap into the grids of the planet Terra with nefarious technology. And this is all a reflection of what happened in Atlantis. It's all as above, so below. And we'll get into why that is later. So the Elanian race, 560 million years ago, started to use weapons of war and control and tap into the grids of planet Terra so they could dominate the planet and take over control of the entire planet. However, what they did not realize was that their weapons were causing the whole grid of the planet to become unstable. And they continued their uh, misuse of the planetary grids till the extent that they made the whole grid unstable to the point that the there was a core explosion in the planet. The, the core of the planet exploded. And it didn't blow apart the whole planet at that time, but bits and pieces of the uh, huge bits and pieces of the planet Terra blew out into outer space and they were sucked into a local sun. So now planet Terra, it has missing fragments. Literally look at the planet Terra. We're, we're going to put up a diagram at here as well. It turned from a garden of Eden into a, like a desolate desert planet that could no longer ascend because it was missing critical vital pieces. Just imagine you as a human, if you lose your crown chakra because of an accident, you can't really ascend normally. So anymore. the planet stayed, the planet continued, they, but, yeah. but fragments of the flag fragments it literally of it blew out into outer space. And those fragments were sucked into one of the local suns of the harmon of the higher harmonic universe, which is just above our dimension. And that sun had a black hole in the very center. And these uh, fragments of the planet Terra also had the soul fragments of all the all the souls that uh, were all the souls that died in this cataclysm. Many souls were lost in this cataclysm. So these souls got sucked into a black hole and millions upon millions of these souls were spitted out from the black hole into a, the lower dimension of harmonic universe one, which is our universe. And that was appro approximately 500 million years ago. And that's when our solar system was still forming. Our sun was like a star and it had like all the planets around the sun were still in a gaseous state. So the fragments of planet Terra came into our solar system and they fused with the gaseous fragments of all the 12 planets that were uh, being formed at that stage in our solar system. So in essence, what happened is that our sun and the 12 planets all inherited these fusions and fused parts of the planet Terra and all the lost souls became part of the planetary uh, grids or planetary consciousness. consciousness that was forming 500 million years ago. Now, when a, when a planet has such a huge cataclysmic event, it can no longer ascend. So the whole point of this Terran project was to create a very powerful race of beings that could be in the physical form, but also ascend into the higher harmonic universes until they became very powerful in angel-like beings that could also stay in the physical. For ascended masters and angels, being in physical and uh, being in a high state of consciousness is the ultimate challenge. That's why this whole process was created. But because now this whole cataclysm took place and uh, our souls, these souls got lost and, and they got trapped in the lower harmo harmonic universe, they could no longer ascend. And at that time, uh, our solar system, when it was first formed, it had 12 planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Maldek, um, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, um, and the planet Nibiru. The planet Nibiru is still um, not discovered or officially declared by our scientists, but it is, um, it is part of our solar system and it has a 3600 year ob um, uh, orbit around the sun. So 
And the sun, our sun actually was a star, but it also fused with a part of Terra. So our entire solar system basically fused with the Terran consciousness. So the souls that were now going to incarnate in our solar system have a very deep bond with what happened in the higher harmonic universe one. So now the beings, these Lyrans, the Syrian councils, the Ra Confederacy, the Pleiadians, all of these beings now had to come up with a plan on how to release these trapped souls from our local universe and give them a path to ascension. And they did that by uh, fusing the core of a mentee. They, uh, they created a Stargate technology known as the core of a mentee. And the core of a mentee is basically a Stargate technology that was introduced into the core of Earth millions of years ago. And that created a portal or like a interdimensional time matrix portal that connected the core of planet Earth into the core of Terra. So in essence, what's happening is that planet Earth is now connected to the state of planet Terra before its destruction. It's as if planet Terra could only ascend until this point in time. And now it cannot ascend any further. Now Earth and all the so 8 billion souls incarnated on Earth have to continue the same evolution that was left off in planet Terra. So planet Terra's uh, planet Terra is a higher dimensional image of planet Earth. In order for planet Terra to ascend, all the souls and all the planets, all the 12 planets on in our solar system had to also evolve in order to complete the ascension cycle for planet Terra. And the sphere of Amenti was the portal that gave us the blueprint or the map that once again allows us to go into from Harmonic Universe 1 into Harmonic Universe 2. So that in a nutshell is what is the sphere of Amenti and we'll go into more details about that. You explained that so well. I hope you guys followed that. That's such a beautiful story. And so basically we humans, we are literally cousins of these Terranusians. Terranusians. We're cousins of them. All of those, those souls. And think of how powerful we as human beings are. That we're just going off of fragments of these fully functional 12 strand activated beings. We're just fractions. And these fractions blew off into a black hole. And that created our universe at Harmonic Universe 1. And now we are ascending. And through the halls of Amenti, we have access back to this Harmonic Universe 2. So this is such a beautiful analogy of what's going on. So one of the other things I want to touch on is the hall of the halls of Amenti. The best way for you guys to, the, the way I look at it, the way I relate to the halls of Amenti is like a hall <clears> of <throat> mirrors. What is a hall of mirrors? A hall of mirrors is like a, a hall of illusion. So have you guys ever walked through literally mirrors everywhere? You're looking at different mirrors and have you guys, this is literally being shown to me by my guides right now. Have you guys walked through these mirrors where in Canada in Niagara Falls, there was this one place where one mirror makes you distorted. It makes you long or tall, sorry. One makes you fat. One makes you so skinny. That was my favorite mirror back then. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Every mirror distorts the image a bit. Now the halls of a mentee are in a way, a, it's basically the way I can explain to you is that it's a, a hall of mirrors that's going to completely, that is here to show you at a very deep level, to show you at a very deep level that everything that you are surrounded by right now in this third dimensional reality is an illusion. It's a Maya. Everything that's above is the reality, which is the soul. So you're living in the Maya. We all are living in the Maya and the soul is above the Maya. The halls of Amenti is that passageway or the gateway. So there's eight gates of, in the halls of Amenti. This, these eight gates, when you pass through these eight gates, you're literally passing through this illusionary world. Like you're literally passing through and you're being tested saying, okay, have you mastered the world of illusion? Let me explain that in a different way. So let's say in this illusion right now, you're constantly surrounded by the illusion of fear, the illusion that you are your ego, meaning you are, I am Jack, or I am Diana. I am a doctor. 
I am. Like you're surrounded by all of these ego constraints. You're also surrounded by this illusionary mirror where you look at your, you forget that there's a mirror, there's a distorted mirror in front of you that's causing you to look tall or, or like distorted, distorted. This is a very strong happening in the collective right now. This is very, very, very much present in our collective energy right now where everything is appearing distorted. There's a lot of people falling off their ascension timelines because of these distortions. It literally means that their ego is able to, the ego, think of your ego like a bouncer. This is, your ego is like a bouncer standing at your door saying, anyone that's going to challenge my authority, anyone who's going to make me feel like, it's, it's a master of victim consciousness, self-pity, and making others who are well for you look like anything that's good for you, the ego keeps out of the door like a bouncer. Okay, that's the best way I can ex explain it. So this ego, this bouncer in everybody's lives is keeping people, humans stuck in this three dimension, this third dimensional matrix where they cannot even pass through the halls of Amenti. Now the gate number one in the hall of Amenti is a very major gate that I want to touch on. Gate number one, so you know how religions, organized religions talk about, oh, when you die, like I know that Christianity talks about it, Islam talks about it, like when you die, you're going to be judged. There's a day of judgment and you're going to be bit by the scorpion. And if you say the word Allah or whatever, like there's all kinds of stories about this, then you'll be passed. All of these are corrupted stories that are not really true. The person, the, the dark angel, the dark Lord guarding gate number one of the hall, halls of Amenti is the guardian of this cycle of reincarnation, is the guardian that's keeping you stuck, keeping all of us stuck in this karmic loop of reincarnating over and over and over again without being able to pass through to halls, uh, hall, uh, gates number two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Right now, there is a major opportunity for us to get out of this gate number one being stuck and get into the other gates. And I'm going to go into later a bit about what is keeping us stuck in these gates. I've made a, a few lists that came to my mind of what's even keeping us stuck in these gates. How do we pass through these gates? We'll get to that later. But what I also want you to remember is <clears throat> that, where was I going with this? Um, is that our, so basically how do we get through the halls of Fomenti is by all these, all the Maya, all the illusion that is we have in our current life all the illusions literally think of this life right now your life as a maya as an illusion where everything you're walking around is here to show you where you're vibrating show you what you're still not adept at to show you where you're still not a master what happens is most people get caught in the illusion most people get caught in the illusion and they're falling off their ascension timelines and many of us are steadfast we're moving forward we're moving forward we're moving forward so I'll touch on this a bit more later, but do you want to touch on that? Add yeah, to that? Yeah, I wanted to add that the basic concept of our human life is that we get so stuck in the physical realms that we only identify with my name is Siman. I am a computer engineer, which was my past. Let's I say am a if, Christian. If I was un unawakened and I was still in my Muslim past, I would say, I'm a so hi, I'm a software engineer. I'm a Muslim. I'm married. I have two children. But you don't realize that before your physical identity, you're a soul. You're an eternal soul. You've li lived hundreds of lives. But the fact that we uh, go through these halls of Amenti and we have all of our memories wiped out and we come back into uh, a new life and we have to start all over again. Why do we have to start all over again? Because the whole process of ascension is going to be repeated until you realize that you are an eternal soul. And the whole point of this life is to lead a life worth examining, lead a life of self-reflection, lead mm -hmm. a life where you realize and ponder all the concepts of existence. When you really, as a soul, get tired of this karma, you've done it so many times, you've repeated fights with your spouse, you've repeated having uh, people let you down, you've repeated all these all the sadness, pain, anguish, war, suffering, when you've repeated it so many times, there comes a point in a soul's path that you say, you know what, I've had enough. I've had enough. What is the meaning of all of this? Why am I repeating this? Because even though your conscious memories are wiped out, but your soul imprint is still there, that pain that you carry just keeps getting heavier and heavier because the soul always carries the 
inherits the imprints of past lifetimes. And if you don't resolve something in this lifetime, you're going to have to resolve it in the next lifetime. So that's why we say when you're consciously incarnated on this planet, take that as an opportunity to <coughs> ascend and move forward. And I, I also wanted to explain with this diagram. And one thing before you go to that. So yeah. basically, um, until so basically, in other words, you cannot pass none of us can pass through the first gate of the halls of Amenti until we clear all our karma until yes. we are 100% in our integrity, 100% in our authenticity, in purity, 100% in our purity in a healed state where we're not going round and round in the same ego stories of being in lack, being in victim, be in mode, being in greed, being in lust, being in addictions, being in always choosing fear over expansion, always choosing stagnation over expansion. So as long as we keep ourselves stuck in the in the matrix of karma, in the wheel of karma, this first angel, which is a dark angel, says, sorry, he has the authorities to say, no, you're going to die and you're going to come back as, and incarnate in this third dimensional realm. Again, have a lifetime for 60, 70 years and you can die. And one other thing I want to mention is every 12,500 years, Earth moves through the photon belt. And, and this stays for what, 2,500 years? Yeah, approximately 2,000 years. 2,000 years or so, Earth stays in this high frequency energy, energetic belt called the photon belt. And we are in that belt right now. We're in that phase now since 2012 or so is what we, we feel like, right? Yeah. 2012 or so 2012 is when we was entered. The marker where the old age ended and we're entering into the golden age cycle. And we're now entering into the photon belt and we're well into it. And so now for the next 2,500 years, basically we're entering the golden age where when we're in the photon belt, when we're in this, in this cycle, which only comes every 12,500 years, we have this amplified assistance to ascend with our physical bodies. What does that mean? Do you want to touch on that? Yeah. So you know how Jesus, when he came, he ascended out of his body. He wasn't actually crucified. Crucifixion was just a story told by the dark ones to scare the hell out of us. Um, but actually, Jesus ascended in his physical body. He took his body with him and he ascended. So what happens is that um, when we enter this phase of the, of the galaxy known as the photon belt, it's actually a belt of light that is very high frequency light that comes from our central sun, which is the star known as Alcyon. And Alcyon is like our our local great central sun. It's not the great central sun of the galaxy. It's the local great central sun that sheds the light of ascension and allows all the souls on our planet this passageway or pathway of ascension while being physically uh, alive. So normally in the dark ages, like in the last 2500 year cycle in the Piscean age, we would have to ascend when we when we die, we would have to die. We would have to go to the first gate of the halls of Amenti. We would be uh, examined by this ar archon at the first gate. If our soul had any vibrations that match these archonic frequencies that are less than love, then we would have our memories wiped out and we would come back and incarnate again. But what happens in the golden age, it's a very golden opportunity for souls to ascend with their physical bodies intact. And Eldora and I feel we're one of the uh, blessed souls who are experiencing this. And many of uh, our audience, many of you uh, awakening um, populations right now off planet Earth, people who are awakening and asking these questions, the very fact that you're listening <coughs> to videos like this means that your souls are curious and thirsty for knowledge and you are, are in the same boat as us. And you always have the chance follow to this quench. Never let it, th let it, never let it die out. Because in this yeah. hall of mirrors, literally, one of the biggest obstacles to this thirst is we literally see people saying, "Oh my God, you have a YouTube channel." I've always wondered about these things, but then they don't pursue it because there is so much fog around us. So always follow this quench. And always. if you follow never this path go. now in this lifetime and have an undying devotion to ascension and raising your vibration and fixing all the flaws that you it's uh, ascension is a path where you examine yourself and you and you remove all your flaws that's basically it you you say oh my god i'm unpleasant to be around i'm uh, some i sometimes lie to people to get my way i yes. sometimes 
I sometimes use manipulation to control my spouse. I sometimes guilt trip my children to give me love. Yes. You know, like all these are flaws in your souls. Because ultimately you're a divine being. Yeah. You are, there's no God outside of you. There is yeah. no God outside of you. It's you basically think of God consciousness. Think of all of us as the soup of God consciousness. So imagine God consciousness is this big soup. Think of the o- ocean. The ocean is a big body of water, but every molecule is individual and it has its own molecule, but it's also part of the ocean. That's how we are. We're all part of God. We're all part of the soup of God consciousness. Every single one of us. And ultimately we are returning to our divine state. So what religions do is they say, worship somebody outside of you, call him something, go to church, go do this. If not, you'll go to hell. Religion puts all of this into us to keep us locked. It's completely a lie. Organized religion is actually completely based on lies, deceit and keeping people. And most of these organized religions basically worship dark gods and they don't even know it. So what we're, our path, the path that we're on and all of you are on is to return and restore the divinity within us because we are all God beings. We're all God consciousness. And when Saman talked about the flaws, when you correct those flaws, you go more into your I am. Yeah. I am presence. You're just beaming love. You're just beaming purity. You're beaming innocence. You're beaming authenticity. And that is your path from your flawed self to your divine self. And this right now in this 12,500 cycle, when earth is going through, it has just gone into the to this beautiful age. We're leaving behind the old age, the Kali Yuga, and we're going into the golden age. So, so many opportunities lie, lie ahead of us. Never let that quench of, for spirituality, personal ascension, personal growth, personal expansion be replaced with anything else. Make this your North Star in life. And that is all you need to do. If you keep your quench active, your guides will guide you. you. They'll bring you synchronicities to guide you through the way. And what happens in the golden age when we enter the photo- photon belt is that amplified assistance is given to us because the physical ascension of the planet is the most important thing that this universe needs to accomplish right now. And our planet cannot ascend without ascending souls. So the more souls that turn on their DNA, the more assistance is provided to this planet to ascend. And when we reach a critical mass of approximately 8% of souls that have activated their DNA strand number five, most souls are in DNA strands number one and two. They're completely like unconscious. Then there's uh, some souls that are like watching these videos, but then they go back to their normal life. They're activating their DNA strand number three. Some souls that have uh, actually pursued this path and started cleansing their all their um, karma, all their negativity and everything that's out of balance. These souls have activated their DNA strand number four. Then there are souls that have activated themselves to such a high extent that they're not uh, like us, that we're saying, okay, now we've done enough of the work that we can assist other people. We can be a beacon of hope for others. That is where you are vibrating at, at the frequency of 150 hertz, 175 hertz, 200 hertz, which is gratitude, unconditional love. It means like even though sometimes people send negativity to us, sometimes people say horrible things about us, people we actually love and care about. But we still say, you know what? Our love for humanity is so huge that we are not going to be deterred from our mission. And that is one of the highest frequencies you can attain while being in this, uh, while being alive in the physical body. And that makes you a candidate for ascension, not not just like uh, sending hatred and blame and uh, projecting and revenge, yes. not all these things. Those keep you locked into the lower states of consciousness and activating your DNA is not just something you can go to a he- healer and get done. That's what many people have a misconception about. Like, let's say. Uh, you're coming to the New Earth Music Festival and then you say, you think that Eldora and Saman are going to give me a healing and then I can ascend. But it doesn't just work that way. The healing is just one part where we remove the energetic imprint of all your, all your karma and all the heaviness. But then actually activating your DNA comes from your own good deeds. That's the most important part that your guides want you to know and they're constantly telling me in my head to repeat this and make sure you get this concept activating your dna 
is not something that is done to you. It's not something that's done by a healer and given to you and then you can ascend. Activating your DNA is done by your own good deeds, by living a good life, by practicing unconditional love, by being generous to others, by going out of your way to assist others. And it all starts with you can't just run and assist others. You have to heal yourself. Yes. You have to go from your through your own healing journey. You have to bring yourself into a place of strength. You have to heal your body. You have to heal your dis-ease. You have to balance your emotions. You have to make sure your thoughts are pure. You have to make sure your emotions are pure. And when you balance your thoughts, the energy of your higher three chakras, which is all your reasoning, and your lower three chakras, which are all your unbalanced emotions, and you zero point it with unconditional love in your heart, and you you realize that you are one with all that is. That's when you go from being a drop of the ocean into becoming the entire ocean as, as one. Yes. That's what it really means as we are all one. What it really means is that in in our level of consciousness, when I see a child, I don't see someone's child. If that child is crying on the street, I'm going to go ask them what happened. Like, I'm going to feel pain in my heart. I'm going to give them comfort and solace. I'm not going to be, my soul is not going to allow me to walk by and be cold. You become to, the to universal mother and father. You realize that everyone is your family. You yes. realize you are, you see yourself in everyone and you are everyone. You become a universal soul and you cannot see any uh, any deed that is going against universal laws it bothers you you can't just ignore it and walk past like sometimes um, we're walking down these forest trails and just as a token uh, or as a sign of respect to planet earth we pick up garbage and put it in our pockets we can't we can't do that for the whole planet the oceans are too huge for us to clean up but if we even give one little token of appreciation to Gaia and say, I'm just going to, as a sign of respect for how much humanity has done damage to this planet, I'm going to just pick up one piece of litter and just as a sign of respect. That means you're sending the signal out to the universe that I am a conscious citizen of this universe. I'm no longer wiping my hands clean. I have a part to play and I'm going to be a responsible citizen of this universe. Then when you balance all these things and you are leading your life to the best extent possible. Then when you come to the gate one, the Archon will have nothing on you. This dark angel that looks at you is actually going to say, there's nothing I can do to stop this Because he doesn't have a hold there's on no you anymore. There's no imprint. There's no vibrational imprint you, with which it can hook you. You've transcended you all karma. You can literally walk through the dark angel. Yes. At this level where we are right now, we're being trained by our own guides to hold this level of unconditional love for everybody, our soul family, the people who work in our office of Christ, everybody who we feel are in kindergarten. Literally, it's the consciousness that I'm talking about because there are so many soul lessons that are still needing to be learned. So many. And instead of getting frustrated and blaming and judging them, we're just saying we understand. We understand that this is your curriculum. We understand that this is where humanity has to go and it's fine we have each other we have each other we don't need any other friends we don't need we have each other so it requires a level of and unconditional even that's love a huge blessing because many people in higher states of consciousness don't even have a partner to share this experience with totally so we thank the universe every single day for the gift of each other all the time and i want to get back to what siman said so when you come to events like the new earth music festival that are so high frequency and go to other events of the of high frequency caliber or you go to po uh, portals and vortices like egypt or mount shasta or anywhere like any big portals like uh, uluru or whatever glastonbury what happens is that your template is raised to higher frequency so just so you understand you're literally upshifted from here to here but then you have to go back home and walk this path yourself meaning all we can do as quantum healers or as facilitators of such high frequency events is that we can lift off the density, clean up your chakras, give you healings and upgrade your light body into maybe two levels up. But then when you go back home, if you start gossiping, backbiting, go back into your lower frequencies, 
then your light body will then go back to where it was. So or you, even lower than where it was. Right. And that's what you guys have to be very, very aware of. Yeah. So when Eldora was mentioning the concept of the Hall of Mirrors, that's really what the Hall of Amenti acts as. It acts as a Hall of Mirror that distorts your view of reality and shows you everything that is not vibrating at the God level of consciousness. Because the whole point of this ascension and the whole point of passing through all the eight levels of the Halls of Amenti is to return back to heaven on earth or the Garden of Eden that we lost once. And uh, I want to go in this diagram, which uh, shows how reality is generated through Fourier transformation. So in the top part of this, um, we can see how there's a lamp, which is denoted by the sun. And the lamp is shining its light through a two dimensional film. This is how you see the movies in the cinema. A light is shown through the film. And when the film is progressing, you see a movie animation on the second dimensional screen. Similarly, our souls are the light. Our souls, this is how this holographic reality is generated on Earth. Think of your soul as the beacon of light. And your soul is actually projecting this consciousness, which is you. It's projecting the light of your consciousness through your DNA. It's connected at the first level, at the lowest level of existence in, before the physical realm is our etheric body which forms our uh, light body and our chakras. Our chakras, think of our chakras as that, as that projector. The chakras are the projector and the soul is the light. And the DNA is the programming instruction that generates the physical illusion of reality. Like if I touch this table before me, I think that my hand touched a physical object. But all that's happening is that my chakras are telling me that there's a physical object here and your hand has to stop at this point. There's no actual table. <laughs> that's the hard part. That's the kicker. That's there's the part no, that's so hard to comprehend you know and explain. <laughs> thought, thought has uh, seven hermetic principles, which we just taught in the New Earth Mystery School. And if you haven't seen that, I highly, highly recommend that for you. It's available at eldoransiman.love and it teaches you deep metaphysical concepts. And the first concept of uh, thought in the Hermetic Principles is the principle of mentalism, that all is mind. And what that really means is that this entire, entire reality, entire the room you're sitting in, uh, when you're walking outside nature, everything, the trees around you, the air that you breathe, everything is a mental projection of your mind. It doesn't actually exist. All that exists is the light of your soul experiencing this reality as if it as if you're in a 3d simulation and the way it works is if we go back to this diagram is your soul which is vibrating in the sixth dimension is the lamp that is projecting this reality out through your dna and your dna is the programming instruction and it creates the physical sensations of your body so your dna actually connects your physical sensations and relays them to your neural cortex and your neural cortex is connected to your chakras and as well as your nervous system and all of this is basically feeding data everything is data the universe is actually mathematical all this data is being fed back into your chakras and your chakras are sending this information through your antakarana which is your bridge of light the antakarana is your tube of light that takes all this data from your uh, chakras and it relays it up into the higher dimensions where your soul resides so your soul is experiencing this <coughs> physical reality through all the data that is being captured by your physical senses through your DNA and experiencing touch, experiencing feel, uh, emotions, feelings, experiencing uh, pain, suffering, pleasure, ecstasy, joy, um, taste, uh, even Smell. sexual pleasures, everything without our physical body our soul is devoid of feeling. Our soul is just pure light. It cannot have all these experiences without this interface. So think of the movie Avatar. I was about to say that, exactly. Yeah, you want to tell that example? No, it's the same thing. Yeah. I was just going to say, just like the movie Avatar. Yeah, basically, <laughs> we're all avatars for yes. the soul. And this is just our body suit. Yes. Think of this as just our body suit that has an intelligence to it. 
And another thing I do is when I have a shower, I'm literally standing there saying, oh my God, what an amazing experience I'm giving my soul right now. My soul cannot enjoy this warm bath or these droplets falling on me, on my body and going into this blissful state. So sometimes the things that we take so for granted for our, from our soul's perspective, our soul is like squirming in ecstasy. Yeah. And I also wanted to go into this diagram, which shows the halls of Enki. Uh, this is taken from ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And uh, this basically shows that these are underground hallways that exist under the Giza pyramid. So many people have been to the Giza pyramid and they think there's just a pyramid on top of the land. But what they don't realize is that the tunnel of networks that extends be beneath the Giza pyramid is even more extensive and is even more uh, s spectacular than anything that exists above the ground. The underground uh, network of tunnels is uh, spans for miles and miles, and they actually look like this, the diagram that we're showing on the TV. And these, this one in particular is called the Halls of Enki. And uh, these, uh, we've actually discovered, scientists have actually discovered and visited the halls of Amenti underneath the Giza pyramid. So there's a physical representation of these halls, which exists just below the surface. But then there's a higher dimensional representation of the halls of Amenti, which is not like a physical hall. These are the physical aspects of the halls of Amenti. But there's a higher dimensional aspect of the halls of Amenti, which is the stargate called the sphere of Amenti, which is what I spoke about that was installed millions of years ago in the core of our planet. And the sphere of Amenti actually exists in higher dimensions and connects the core of Earth to the higher dimensions. So when a soul is about to ascend, whether in a physical ascension, uh, meaning you're still alive, or after death you're being tested whether you can ascend or not, you go to the halls of Amenti in the core of Earth, the non-physical version. But there's actually a physical version of the Halls of Amenti just underneath the Giza Pyramid. And in is this, it under the Pyramid or the Sphinx? There's uh, Under the Sphinx is actually uh, the, the legend connected. is that there's a portal, there's like a gateway that connects or kind of like a tunnel way that connects the left paw of the Sphinx to the actual uh, stargate. higher dimensional stargate right. ca called the Halls of Amenti. Right, right. And, uh, so that's a different topic. I'll go into that in a bit. But these physical halls of Amenti that are underneath the Giza pyramid, they were used by these Atlantean masters as regeneration chambers. So within within the these physical halls, when you visit them, you can actually visit them. There are uh, about 80 ton or yeah, <coughs> 80 ton megalithic granite coffin looking structures which you can see in the corner that black object on the left uh, bottom corner these are huge granite like coffins and these were uh, molecularly created they were too huge to be able to transport it into these tunnels because they're actually <coughs> bigger than the passageway of the tunnels and what scientists have theorized and found is that these granite coffin like structures were regeneration chambers so the halls of Amenti were uh, had multiple purposes in addition to ascension. They allowed ascended masters when they incarnated on Earth um, approximately 25,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, when we were still in the golden age of Atlantis, the ascended masters were able to enter these regeneration chambers made of granite in the halls of Amenti, and they were able to regenerate their physical bodies. So they never died. So, and even just get a new body suit. Yeah, sometimes if your body, uh, after maybe hundreds of years, their body gets weak and old and frail because of the conditions of the planet. What they would do is leave the body in one of the regeneration chambers <coughs> so it gets younger. And while that body is getting younger for 100 years, they would just jump their consciousness into a brand new suit, into a brand new body. So they could perpetually live for thousands of years. It is uh, known, very well known, that Thought, um, when he was Hermes in Greece, he had three, uh, three incarnations in Greece. That's why he was known as Hermes Trimagestus, thrice great. In three, uh, only three incarnations were in Greece, but he actually 
had uh, back-to-back incarnations since ancient Atlantis for approximately 13 to 14,000 years, which means he had many bodies, but his consciousness remained the same. He was still the same person. He still had the same memories. He would just like um, leave one body behind, go into these regeneration chambers and grab another suit and come back and still continue the work that he had left off. And many of you might actually be wondering, so in this lifetime, are we going to die or are we going to ascend with our physical body? So let's get get to that a bit. This wasn't a part of this video, but it just came to me to touch on that subject super quick, that if you're still stuck in the wheel of karma, you will not be able to pass through the first gate of the halls of Omenti. So you'll be stuck in this when you die, when your physical body dies, what will happen is you will literally be put back in a another incarnation where you have to be born as a baby and go through the whole process for many many lifetimes but right now in this lifetime we're being shown saman and i that we are amongst the front runners of souls walking through this dimensional gateway where we can actually ascend with our physical bodies just like jesus did we're many of us on planet earth i'm sure there's other people that we have not met yet but we are already vibrating very high we're vibrating ascended master consciousness we're being trained on this consciousness called ascended master consciousness which really is just emanating pure love holding space for people not judging not blaming not going into revenge even when people spew their hate and their jealousy and their envy on us which happens a lot but we just don't return it we don't even attach to it most people get so caught up in oh they're doing this let's not forgive them instead we go into their kids they are kids we send them our love and we also send them forgiveness. So we exit this karmic plane. So if you can work through your karma, if you can work through your lessons, it's this is a full time job. The halls of Amenti was literally put in place so that you can constantly realize that this is a world of mirrors. It's a world of illusion and be aware of that at a molecular level, molecular level day to day every second of the day and this is easier said than done it's a full-time job but if you can actually watch your every emotion every thought every word and get back into purity and authenticity and your inner child fully healed and allowed to play and truly get into service to the collective not hoarding truly sharing truly sharing your knowledge there's a i'll give you a very direct example there's a lot of spiritual teachers who we see, they're not here to serve. They're here to grow their ego. They're here to get a big following. They're here to um, amass wealth. There are very few spiritual teachers, very few. I can probably not, I don't even need my whole left palm that I know of who are actually here to teach and serve and who are here as ambassadors, servants of the divine saying, we want to transfer everything we know to the other person. It doesn't matter if they charge money or not. All of these money and not money, money is just energy exchange, but A lot of spiritual teachers have kept themselves in this karmic loop because they don't want to share. They don't want to say, hey, I take these superfoods, have them. Hey, this is what you do to ascend. Here's my YouTube channel for free. So what's happening is that humans don't have a protege. They don't have this template of how to even get out of prototype. Sorry. So watch yourself every second because, yes, there is a chance for physical ascension. And right now, Earth's energies are very conducive to it. We're being trained on it. We're being shown the last remaining bits of our blind spots, of our ego, wherever there's last remaining blind spots. We're currently being trained on how humanity is right now. We're being given advanced training on human psychology, saying all these people, they may look the same. They may look like you, but we are showing you directly where human beings are vibrating. We're showing you where your soul family is vibrating. We're showing you where your audience is vibrating, the people who follow you, so that you can truly be their mentors and truly show them the gap that they all have to rise to. And I'm being very blunt here. I'm being very honestly blunt here. There is a huge gap. So don't kid yourselves. Instead, embrace the fuck out of it. Embrace it and say, I am in kindergarten. I'm a student. I'm a student of the light. And I affirm that I will do everything it takes to align my will to divine will, divine will. I will do everything it takes to put my spirituality first. Don't get caught in this illusion, my friends. Don't get caught in this Maya. Move past it. And I also wanted to cover a very important topic that's related to what Eldora just mentioned, is that you don't have to quit your 3D jobs in order to ascend. Yes. Like if someone's a lawyer and they're saying, what do I need to become a vagabond and go to the Himalayas to ascend, like how's that going to work? 
So mm. basically, what do you do if you're a lawyer? What do you do if, it, if you're a doctor? And how do you apply these principles? If you're a lawyer and you start having an open heart, you can maybe one in every five cases that you take, take it for someone who doesn't have any money to help themselves and you really feel that they need help and they deserve help and they're an honest person who's being victimized by someone who's a bully. You can do that. Mm -hmm. If you're a doctor, you can actually uh, look past the fact that someone doesn't have their health card. Maybe they're an illegal immigrant, but their legs broken. You're not going to send them home. I you're going to maybe in your spare time, go pay them a house call. So you can ascend in whatever profession you're currently in. You you can be a teacher and you, you know, like many teachers are teaching children how to meditate. And if you don't resonate with certain things that are written in the textbook that you feel are brainwashing children, then don't teach them. Like use the light of your own soul yes. rather than being entrapped in this matrix and just working like a robot. And be okay with breaking the rules a bit. Breaking, Literally. Breaking the rules that don't agree with your soul. Yes. Or, or this, then change your profession. If you're a teacher and you don't agree with certain things the way your organization is doing, then maybe become a teacher with, for yourself. Maybe become an online teacher with no rules. M make your own rules. So there's so many things we can do to ascend. It's just whatever does not assign, uh, align with the truth of your soul, discard that and always align with the highest truth. There's one other very important thing I want to talk about before I forget, because the guides have been pinging me about it this today. And again, now they pinged me about it right now because of where we are right now in 2022. End of 2022, we're walking through this giant portal on New Year's Eve. We're going into 2023 and 2023 is going to be very easy for those of us who follow all the tips and tricks that we're talking about, who follow the calling of our higher path, call, follow the calling of our soul. It's also going to be very challenging for those of us who are wallowing in our ego, in our self-pity, in our blame, in our projections. Because literally, please take this as a, as a prediction for 2023. Because if we're being shown one thing about 2023 is like you're going to create the reality that you set out. You can either go whatever fully you into Whatever vibrate your, is what you create. Yes. You, whatever you vibrate, you create. And 2023 is really going to show us all that. Okay. So right now what's happening is that i'm being shown all day today that there's an energy of cords of all that so you guys have grown so much but do you guys realize that all the interactions you've had in the last year with people with lovers with friends with family there's so much going on there's people who belittled you for not taking the jab there's people who bel who belittled you for not going to church who are not get your parents are belittling you probably like who knows all of this negative energy friends, colleagues, co-workers, whoever, relationships, all of this negative energy is floating around in your field. Okay. And what's happening right now is humanity as a collective is processing some very deep sorrow, very, very ancient sorrow, very uh, ancient sadness. And Siman touched on this earlier where he said the higher chakras are all about intellect and whatnot. The lower chakras are all about emotion. Most of us are distorted in our emotional balance. And right now, until we get complete balance of the emotional realms, which is the lower three chakras, that is again a block to passing through the Hall of Amenti. And the guides want us to really, really touch on this today. And the uh, ping for this is extremely strong. Now, what are negative chords? Negative chords, so anytime you have an interaction with someone that's unpleasant, toxic, it could be a huge fight you've had with your husband. There's so much negative energy created. And let's say the next day you just forgot forget about it. You go for dinner after two days and it's all done. Now, what happens is from your solar plexus to their solar plexus, depending on the case or your heart chakra to their heart chakra, there's a dark when we do our healings, when we do our group quantum healings, we can see these cords. They're floating all around you. These thick, gooey black cords are connected from your heart chakra to the person's heart chakra. It could be your own children. It could be your own spouse. It could be your own mother. These cords are very real. And as long as, as long as these cords are still attached from your heart to their heart, it's like they're constantly tugging at you constantly. And you don't even know and they're it. draining your energy. And they're they're making sucking you your feel life disgusted. force. They're fully sucking your life force. They're making you feel fatigued, body pain, not sure what's going on, not sure where you're going, disconnected from your guidance. Now, 
right now every single one of you is being asked to do a mega cord cutting now i know there was many of you there was over 1500 of you who joined us in march for the cord cutting ceremony with archangel michael it was one of the most powerful events i if we've done five powerful events that's one of them i would say these are our five mandatory events that we highly recommend you do i'll tell you what the others are so cord cutting is one mandatory event the 222 serious activation <clears throat> portal is another mandatory event where we heal your light body we literally heal we give you a full day of lecture on how your markaba works then siman does a detailed crystal healing and restores certain broken damaged crystals in your markaba light body and then we activate the light body this is advanced work my friends this is advanced work we work with meditronic healers to heal your light body super powerful and then once the markaba is activated we take you on an astral journey and just yesterday i got a message a, a testimonial on our on my grounding video saying I just did this video. I connected. I went on my astral journey. We connect you with your personal lion, and she said it's the best. I think it was two hundred and twenty-two dollars, right? Yeah. She said it's the best two hundred and twenty-two dollars I've spent in my life, and we have received thousands, like hundreds, if not thousands. We've received several hundreds of testimonials like this. So that's another mandatory. But right now, guys, you're being asked to do the cord cutting above all. It's eighty-eight dollars. It's super dirt cheap. It's available on Eldora and Siman dot Love, so E L D O R A, A N D S I M A N dot L O V E. You go to Premium Offerings on the top; it's a tab, and down you'll see you'll see Thought, you'll see Two Two Two, you'll see Cord Cutting, you'll see Merlin. All our top events are under Premium Offering, but this Cord Cutting you're being asked to do before 2023 or in the first month of 2023, like ASAP, basically. Why is that? you're literally being ejected out of density energetically and you're being pushed into this portal this gateway that we call 2023 like you're literally being it's being shown to me in my psychic eye like a birthing canal and you cannot take this density with you all of these cords that are vibrating in every single one of you watching there's no one exempt from this the we do regular cord cuttings on ourselves in fact i did one this morning i i was guided exactly like i'm telling you guys to do a deep cord cutting with all the people i did a cord cutting with even the ones i love with the office of christ team they i love them why do we do regular i did a cord cutting with uh all the people in the last few months who've been in our vortex who didn't work out who've been sending us even negative energy even with each other we do a cord cutting to clear the negative energy any time makes the relationship very healthy we've and in the yeah we we do regular cord cuttings luckily we don't need a lot of cord cuttings right yeah. now but we still but do I'm it but i'm saying for spouses it's yes, actually recommended it's it's mandatory it's mandatory cuz all this any time you create negative energy even with your children it's super important now when you do the cord cutting you can do it with your spouse you can do it with your children this is one of the most important tools i can give you right now is to do the cord cutting archangel michael's energy is encoded into this frequency in this activation so he's going to come and, and help you cut cords and the replay is exactly as powerful as watching the actual event it's because super it's powerful. encoded with quantum energies and it's like you're actually there in that moment so highly recommend that check that out what else um and and also in the cord cutting ceremony we give you practical like literally it's it's a very fun it's a full day event you probably need 6 to 7 hours to do it you can break it up over 2 days literally the i'm going to put up some of the testimonials here so you guys can see but literally what we do is we do a full fledged explanation of how cords work and then we do a physical cord cutting quantum healing with you and then we actually give you exercises which are so fun where you write down all that's weighing you down we teach you how to actually let go of all that's weighing you down and we teach you how to get the message from each of these cords so that you can transcend these cords and not become a vibrational match to attract more cords of the same caliber into you again and again because cord cutting is only one part of it the other part of it which is equally important is to understand what message did this cord hold for me and how do i change my behavior so that i don't attach this cord to me again with somebody else yeah. otherwise you're stuck in the same how loop how to repeat the repeating patterns in your life how to break out of the repeating patterns in your life that actually create these cords yes so we actually don't just remove the cords and let you go back to the same patterns we actually shed light on how to break those old patterns and habits so you don't get the cords again right after doing this experiment and you have lifetime access to it meaning you can do it we highly recommend you do it every 2 months every 3 months at most do it every 3 months you have lifetime access to this 
And uh, I wanted to end by, you know, very high note by reminding everyone that, and, and this is coming in from the guides and they want to leave you on a very high note, that we are entering into a golden age. And that means that now pla our planet Earth has processed enough of the soul karma on a collective human level that we can now merge back with our Terran consciousness. Mm -hmm. The fall of Terra that took place 560 million years ago, we are now at that very historic moment in our, uh, our time, in our evolution, when we have processed all of the karma or just enough of the karma so that the angels can relieve us of the wheel of karma. Mm. So what's going to happen in this golden age is that there are still negative people. There are still all these souls that don't want to ascend. There are still souls that want to control and manipulate. What's going to happen is that over one generation, these souls that are not able to ascend or are just not willing to learn, they're not going to be allowed to um, reincarnate on this planet anymore because this planet is going to be raised in its frequency and it's already happening. You've noticed how the energy of planet Earth is becoming more and more and more high frequency and more of our lessons are coming up to be processed and it seems sometimes intense. But this is all a very, very, very beautiful thing because we are now returning to Terran consciousness. We are going to, from Gaia to ascended Terra, heaven on Earth. And it means that we're once again going to create the Garden of Eden with our higher level consciousness. Mm. There will come a point in our in our lifetimes by 2040, by 2050, uh, by these decades, most of the souls that are not vibrating at the fifth dimension level of consciousness are going to have to exit this plane of reality. And what that means is they literally won't be a vibrational match to Earth anymore. So if yeah. they're still vibrating in the realms of duality, greed, lust, you guys know the emotional scale. If they're still projecting blame, anger, ego, envy, all of that stuff, they will just be moved. So let's say they die, they pass on, they transition. In their next incarnation, they will just be born. They will be birthed in a completely different planet. In a parallel planet that is a three-dimensional duality consciousness planet where there's still karma and they can still play out their karma and learn the lessons, but they just need more time and to learn And take another lessons. 100 or 200 or 1,000 lifetimes. And we have the option to completely move past that right now. That is why every video we focus on nothing other than these kind of messages. Because and what, this is all that is important, my friends. This is all that is important. What happens once our planet ascends over the next few decades is that this becomes a Garden of Eden and then we can actually ascend in our physical bodies. It means that the frequency of this of the planet will become so high that our particles of uh, the physical particles that make up our physical bodies are going to merge with our soul to such a high extent that we're going to become um, high frequency light beings that can be etheric and physical at the same time. I can't wait. <laughs> if, yeah, we're going to have uh, rejuvenation. We're going to have healing technologies return to humanity. We're going to have uh, reverse aging technologies. We're going to have uh, many technologies and patents that we held in Atlantis are going to be returned to Earth that allow us to create organic foods out of out of energy. Uh, the uh, slaughter of animals will cease to exist because we can literally synthesize meat out of energy without harming any without animals. Without harming any animals, we're uh, we're not even going to vibrate at the level where we want meat anymore. We're going to vibrate more where most people live off the breath and light, and most people just feel like having organic fruits and vegetables. Um, our planet is going to be very abundant. We're going to have access to any resources we want. And this is going to once again be the Garden of Eden and the future generations that are being born right now. The babies that are uh, just being born or were born in the last few years are such high frequency ascended masters that their very presence on Earth is going to create this chain reaction and bring about the golden age. Oh. So things are getting very exciting, folks. Just hang in there. It just seems like this is the last part where we have to pass through the birthing canal and for birth there is pain and the pain equates to all the things that we need to release so rejoice and release everything that you need to because something beautiful lies ahead 
and I just want to say, just because I want to, I just want to say it, it just is coming through me. For any of you, I know it's like, what is it, the 25th today, oh my god, we'll probably upload this today or tomorrow. The New Earth Music Festival starts on the 29th. It literally, the first program is at 5.30 or 6 p.m. Croatia time. If any of you are on the fence and you're in Europe or wherever and you can make it, just come. We have at least seven spots that we can offer without any, without even having to think about it. We have the bandwidth for about seven spots. Go to houseofra.com. This will be the most activating, the most high frequency, the most healing, upgrading, joyful, fun, like event that you can possibly walk into 2023 with. It is going to be super fun. The Soul Family is buzzing with excitement. People are already starting to post selfies and pack whatnot. Go to houseofra.com, check it out. And if you're meant to be there, we welcome you. We have about a budget for seven more spots. I love you guys. Comment below, let us know how it went and we're sending you all our love. Until next time. <laughs>